Uh, I can tell you that story, how Dick Vitale got started. But, um, well, tell uh, us. Tell you, you really want to know? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Well, um, Dick Vitale and I get very close. And uh, he's a very good coach. And we talk almost every day, almost every day. And I go, he invites me to his, his uh, high school, it's a high school dinner. It's an award dinner, and he's giving an awards, awards for uh, each of the play, you know, different MVPs and mm -hmm. this and that. And uh, he gets up, no notes, no script, and he starts to talk. He goes for at least, <laughs> I would say, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, I timed it, on my watch, without a script, without a note, all 15 players on his team, he talks about them, what time they get up in the morning, what they scored in the games, foul shots they missed, foul shots they made, uh, uh, what time they go, how many times a day they go to the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, it was the most incredible. Each player, 15 players, he had and he went on for 90 minutes. It was the most incredible performance I have ever seen anytime, anywhere. And I, I was stunned. I was, so I, I, I was astounded by Dick Vitale's performance. It was, was incredible. And um, I said, this guy, this, guy should be, this guy should be coaching big time ball somewhere. What is he doing in this little high school? I love high school, but come on, this guy's a genius. So um, it turns out the assistant coach of Rutgers retires or gets fired, and Dick Lloyd, who I knew fairly well at the time, is the head coach of Rutgers. And I'll never forget this. It's a it's a Wednesday, or a third, it's a Wednesday or Thursday, Wednesday. And I called Dick Lloyd on the phone. I said, Dick. Uh, I have an assistant for you. I have an applicant that you should definitely uh, interview. And uh, he's brilliant. His name is Dick Vitale. He's a high school coach. He says, Garp, I got to shut you off. Start shutting you off. I have, my, I have five people. I have my five people. Uh, they're coming in one a day. I've had two already, Monday, Tuesday. I have three more coming in, one this afternoon, one Thursday, one Friday. It's over. I said, could you tell me who they are? And he mentions the five names. And I said, Dick, you don't have the right guy. I said, my guy is better. I know these five people. And I, I said, my guy is going to be a great recruiter. But who do you ever recruit? I said, well, he's a high school coach. But trust me, he's a genius. He's brilliant. You've got to interview him. He says, I can't. I said, OK, goodbye. Hang on. Now, I had a, I have a thing, I have a thing, oh, I had a thing then, I never ask anyone anything twice. In other words, uh, if I get turned down, I stop. I don't want to be a pest, and uh, I never, I never went back a second time. I never made a second call in my life. However, on Friday, I don't know why I call him again. I call him back Friday morning. I said, Dick, uh, it's me again. Um, how, how you doing? How'd you, what'd you decide? Did you pick your man yet? He said, no, I have one more this afternoon. I said, Dick, you've got to interview Dick Vitale. I said, I know you turned me down one time, but uh, this and that, I start telling him stuff about him. He says, He's all right, you pain in the ass. I said, hey, I'm at five o'clock. Uh, I'll stay around. If you can reach him, have him come in tonight at seven o'clock. Thanks, Dick. And I run to the phone. I call my towel up. I said, what are you doing? And he said, seven o'clock tonight, you've got to be at Rutgers for an interview. I tell him what, what to wear. I tell him how to dress. I tell him, don't tell Dick Lloyd you're a great coach. Do not tell him you're a great coach. Tell him you can recruit 
That's the name of the game is recruiting and, and harp on the recruiting that you can do. So this is a true story now. He goes in at 7 o'clock at 8.30. Dick Lloyd offers Dick Vital the job. Hard to believe? True story. Not hard to believe when it's Dick Vital. Dick Vital. He actually talked his way into it in an hour. It was over. History. And Dick Vital becomes... No. Dick Vital becomes the uh, assistant coach of Rutgers. Unfortunately for Dick Lloyd, <laughs> Dick Vital is too good because he recruits Phil Sellers and Ron Dabney, Sellers mm -hmm. and Dabney, two of the best high school players ever in the New York, New Jersey area, and they both go to Rutgers, and Dick Lloyd can't win with them, and they lose, and Dick Lloyd gets fired in two years with Dick Vitale's great players. So that, that was the unfortunate part of Dick Lloyd. But uh, Vitale then becomes the... Uh, uh, he leaves there, I believe he went to Detroit, and mm -hmm. this whole thing. Um, now let me see what happened. He goes to Detroit, Dick Vitale. Yes, goes. had success in and Detroit. He's very, very successful. Now we talk, I would say, without exaggeration, every other day for five years. You'd be here in the high school, and then on and on through his Detroit career. I got him a few players in Detroit, he does very well, and we talk. And then he gets the head job in the NBA. Detroit Pistons. Detroit Pistons. He gets the head job. I'd say two months go by. I said three months. Two months went by. Two, three months go by. I don't hear from him right now. Phone rings. Sticky V, Sticky V, Garf, listen. I need you, I need, I need to know what you think of this. I just made a trade. I just made a trade. I want to know what you think. I just traded Chris Ford for Earl Tatum. Now I had seen Earl Tatum play. And I had heard some things about him. Weren't a hundred percent. Chris Ford was my guy. I had helped him get into college and high school and they put him on the all-star teams and I knew him very well. He said, I just traded Chris Ford for Earl Tatum. What do you think? I said, Dick, you just got fired. So help me, that's what I said to him. You just got fired. I said, that's the worst trade in the history of basketball. I said, you traded one of the great players and the great people uh, for a talent with a big question mark on his head. I said, you're finished. You know, I was kidding about it. Um, two months later, Dick Vitale got fired. And not because of that, because he couldn't get the ball in bounds. Mm -hmm. so he could not get the ball in bounds against pressure in the NBA. Uh, but that was the luckiest thing that ever happened to Dick Vitale when he got fired, because he went to ESPN and the mm -hmm. rest is history. And it's my opinion, I could be wrong, I think Dick Vitale then and threw up in maybe two, three years ago, was the biggest reason for ESPN's dominance of college basketball till today. And no one gives him enough credit. Dick Vitale made college basketball famous in America. I mean, totally, totally famous, TV-wise mm -hmm. famous, through his uh, you know, analysis and excitement and enthusiasm. And uh, today he's uh, lost his voice a little bit. No, he's still good, but uh, uh, he 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 brought he, he he made it he made it he made ESPN. And I don't know if ESPN gives him enough credit. Let but, me add my Dick Vitale story. I'm assistant coach at the University of Maryland. Uh, I get a call, pick up the phone. This George Rowling, yes, Dick Vitale. Is, is a junior high, I'm a junior high coach in Passaic, New Jersey. He says, uh, I run a basketball camp out uh, here. I, I hear that you're a good camp lecturer. Well, I want to have you come up and speak to our kids and I'll pay you and that. So I said, fine. So we set the date. I go up. Uh, 
he introduces me, puts me on. I, I start speaking. Uh, I think I'm on for an hour. Hour goes by, no big fight out. So I, I said, oh, so I, I, go in, I, I go into another lecture. Vital still doesn't show up. So now I, gotta, I, I, I start in the morning, I speak up until lunchtime, Vital shows up. And, and I, I know he'll deny this story, but it's true. And so he shows up and he thanks me in that. And the mistake I made, I never asked him how much he was going to pay me. He just said he was going to pay me. So, so he hands me five bucks and a brown bag. Oh, and thanks me. So I said, okay. And I have. I, I was rushing because I had to get back to College Park for something that evening. So on the way back, I, I stop and get a, a a pop, and uh, and I open the brown bag, and there's a bologna sandwich in there. <laughs> so for that's Vital funny. got me the cheapest of anybody in the history oh, to speak. Funny. Five bucks in a bologna sandwich. <laughs> 